tenían canciones Ojalá pase algo que te borre de pronto Una luz cegadora, un disparo de nieve Ojalá por lo menos que me lleve el amor Para no verte tanto, para no verte siempre En todos los segundos, en todas las visiones Welcome to Waffle Island. We are located in northern Chile and Patagonia, looking right straight. We have here up north all the rest of Chile and to the west, opening totally open to the Pacific. We are located in this particular like northwest point of Waffle Island, where we have the biggest first year rookery uh, in the Pacific. When I get here, I was impressed because such a beautiful place, it's uh, like a paradise island, so much life here, versus uh, sea, beer, whales, orcas, etc. So I totally in love with Waffle. <laughs> so Waffle Island is basically a big natural laboratory. In a very small area we have orcas, fur seals, sea lions, blue whales, humpback whales, southern right whales. We have all these different species like basically living together and interacting. And this is a very strategic point where we have the mix of different currents and where the productivity of the ocean is very high. There really aren't that many other positions and other locations around the world that have this type of freedom when doing the research. They truly have something unique going on here. We think that this place is really significant for the maintenance of many of these species. They come here not just to rest or just to spend spend part of their their lifetime. Most of them reproduce in this area. So the maintenance of these populations depends on the maintenance of this place. Our job as research assistants was to study the first seal behavior on Waffle and obtain blood tissue and biometric data on this population. We hope to get a better understanding on why some fur seal pups thrive and others fail to overcome the devastation of parasitic infections. I came to Waffle Island the first time in 2006. I came to help with the necropsies and to determine the cause of death of the pups at that time. Working with the fur seals, it's really exciting to be able to get more of the hands-on and research aspect. They are a little bit more feisty than expected. I didn't imagine like their front flippers to be so powerful and having to hold them while they wiggle trying to get the blood samples. Being able to view the fur seals here, living right next to their rookery, I was able to learn a lot of new techniques, a lot of new animal behaviors as well. The fur seals are amazing mammals because in many senses they are uh, very unique because of the things that they do. Uh, probably they look very similar to you, to sea lions, or maybe to even seals, but they're actually, their biology is a little bit different. In most fur seal species are more pelagic, so that means that they live closer to areas of the ocean that are open and where the, the waters are deeper. They usually forage like way deep into the ocean, and many sea lion species, like the, for instance the South American sea lions, usually they forage more closer to the shore. Not many people can comprehend the difficulties with doing this type of research. We have to be on guard and alert at all times. Our team's progress can be severely affected by a rogue seal attack, which could result in a researcher being emergency evacuated. I would definitely say working with the males. Uh, they do scare me because they're super large, and I just feel like they can easily just bite us and attack us, but we've been able to overcome them with like shields and little sticks. Um, I did not expect to be fighting a seal. I fought with one male, so that was very um, exciting, anxious, nerve-wracking. I think the most difficult thing to realize is when to act in the seal rookery and when to back down and allow for a seal to pass so that a confrontation doesn't happen. It's tough because you're always envisioning that you have to defend your group, defend yourself, defend the rest of your research team when in retrospect, you also need to know when you need to back away. Sometimes this can mean devastating results to us if we hesitate too much or too much of an impact in the seal rookery 
resulting in that seal not being able to function anymore in its own society and environment. For fur seals, as many other pinnipeds, there is a very good differentiation between males and females. So in this case, we are seeing a male uh, fur seal and they have a larger chest. Um, their overall size is also larger than, than, than the females. And in this season, particularly the reproductive season, they usually will be securing a spot within the rookery, which is the place where they will be trying to fight for and keep that place away from any other threat or any other uh, fertile male that try to come there. Why do they do that? Because what all the females that are within that area will mate with that male. So that's the way that the male basically secures his reproduction. Coming to Guapo, I didn't realize that the people that I was coming with would feel more like family rather than a team and I've learned a lot from each person individually and a lot about the first seals. It definitely helps you get a different perspective of what it is to actually live near the rookeries and with the first seals versus seeing them only in aquariums and more in human enclosures. Along with the constant urge to reproduce or perish, fur seals face a number of threats. Climate change and human impacts such as overfishing as well as pollution have put fur seals in jeopardy due to the competition of resources. In this rookery, the main threat that the pups will confront is a disease produced by a parasite that's actually transmitted from the mothers through their milk. This is a parasite that sucks the blood of the pups when it's located in the intestine. It's what we know as a hookworm, um, and the genus name is Oncineria. So this parasite is the main cause of mortality in this particular rookery and while some pups are able to overcome the infection and survive others are not able to do so and will finally end up dying because of the infection. I never knew how to capture restrain or even really see field work in action seeing all the blood taken and especially the necropsies I've never ever seen one before so it's cool seeing it, especially going through and being able to see and understand things that are happening at the parasitic level. So hookworms are actually parasites of land mammals, but we also have them in some pinnipedic species, especially notarites, the seals that can walk on mainland. Most of these seals, they have at least one species of hookworms that affects them. These hookworms are carried by the females in their mammary gland and when they give birth, there are some probably hormonal signals that the parasite detects and then it goes to the mammary gland of the female and then through the milk is ingested by the pup. This only happens during the very first days of the pup's life. That means when the female is producing colostrum, which is the first milk that they produce, which is high in nutrients and immunoglobulins. Once the larvae have been ingested by the pups, these larvae develop into the intestine and become adults within 14 to 18 days. When these hookworms become adults in the intestine, they start releasing eggs th through the pup's feces. These eggs will reach the environment and remain in the soil for maybe one or two days, and then they larvate within the egg. And then finally, L3 stages larvae are released from the egg and these larvae uh, stay in the soil and look for the next host. So these larvae are able to penetrate the skin of most of the animals in the rookery. It's definitely an interesting opportunity to be able to study the effects of this parasite in a relatively preserved environment where there is little human presence. Guapo has been able to provide more of the hands-on field work, uh, medical aspects, and being able to actually see how the seals actually no people here, so there exists a few colony of fur seal that never before have studied. It is a beautiful island and some place that you're not really going to be able to see anywhere else and get that hands-on experience that I know a lot of people going into the animal care fields. It's really important and really hard to find in a lot of places. I feel like right now we are like in the age of marine protected areas. So since maybe 20, 30 years ago, people started to understand that not just landscapes, 
needs to be protected by also marine ecosystems. You don't have easy access to, to this part of the ocean. Nobody knows about what. So I think that any kind of study that you do here is important. And I really hope that one day it does become a marine protected area to help prevent losses to the marine mammals that swim offshore in this significant research site that they all call home. This is one of the sites in Chile that needs to be protected in order to ensure that what we are seeing today is still here in another country. I think that this was a unique experience. I have never done field work before. I think it's beautiful and I think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm very happy to be here in Wapu, working with people from other countries. Currently the island is for sale and this pristine natural habitat may well be in danger by human economic exploitation. Years of research have shown the unique contribution of this island and it cannot afford to be lost. So far, even though there has been a plan to create a marine protected area, we haven't seen concrete actions towards that objective so far. We still don't have the people that needs to be convinced at the political level that this site needs protection. <laughs> It's not Captain Morgan, like you're <laughs> <laughs> That's Little Mermaid impression. <laughs> Tomando alcohol, ahogando la maldita angustia en la botella. Voy a olvidarme de ti, tomando alcohol. Voy a olvidar los momentos malos que viví con ella. Han sido los días más duros que me ha tocado vivir. Desde que tú te marchaste todo me duele Como para no pensar Debo para no acordarme Pero si me quema en alma cuando tú no estás Voy a olvidarme de ti tomando alcohol Ahogando la maldita angustia en la botella